What's up, everyone? We are live at 5. It is Friday, May 8th, they tell me. I'm Paul Wontorek. I'm Beth Stevens. And we're joined, as always, by Caitlin Moynihan. Hello! And her dramatic earrings. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you have a sponsor today for your earrings? <laughs> no, but I got these in Guatemala, so shout out. Oh, I love that. Nice. I love that. Hey, Beth. Who do yes. we have on today? Oh, we are so lucky because we have Maria here. And by Maria, I mean Shireen Pimentel from West Side Story. Yes. Oh, she is so good. So talented. So, yes. I'm so excited to catch up with her. But first, let's talk about today's, there's not much, but today's news. Yes, actually, you know what? I got to be honest with you. I forget what the first thing is. <laughs> oh, uh, 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 Mother's Day on Broadway. Take it away, Beth. Well, Sunday is Mother's Day. And if you haven't gotten anything from your mother, you can send her a link to oh. this wonderful show, which is Broadway Does Mother's Day, which we've already talked about. But they've added new stars. And that's why there's a picture of Bernadette Peters up there. Um, so there's so many new people. I'm not going to read them all, but I'll give you a little taste. Bernadette Peters, Victor Garber, Annalie Ashford, Danae Benton, Miguel Cervantes, who we just talked to, the Cooper siblings, Eddie and Lily, so many people, Leah Delaria, great lineup, joining even more stars and shows, including Ain't Too Proud and Beetlejuice and Come From Away and Dear Evan Hansen and Harry Potter and the Cursed Child and Sing Street. So you did get your mother something pretty special after all, didn't you? This is... Sunday, May 10th at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, right here on Broadway.com or on our YouTube channel. Yeah, that's the big news. It's at Broadway.com. We're hosting it now, so it's exciting. Yeah. And I can also tell you, there are some. they have some surprises up their sleeves. So uh -huh. there, might, there might be some other people in the mix that you didn't mention. You yeah. have intel I don't have. And it's a matinee. It's a fun Sunday matinee. I'm that's right. Make up. your mother brunch and then show yeah. her. Life. Yeah, and it's all for uh, Broadway Cares. COVID-19 emergency system fund. If you wouldn't say that, did you say that? You probably didn't. I didn't say it, but I was getting there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and this Harry Potter at Home series is getting a magic from our stage friends. Look at that diva right there, Noma Dumasone. We love her. Gosh, oh my yeah. God. She is fantastic. That's from opening night. Um, she's fantastic. And they're doing, so they're doing this great thing mm -hmm. called Harry Potter at Home. And basically stars are reading chapters of the first book Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, that's where it all started. And Daniel Radcliffe did it, he did chapter one. And now chapter two is read by Noma Duvazuni, who of course won an Olivier Award and got a Tony nomination for playing Hermione in Harry Potter and the Cursed Child in the West End and Broadway. She's fantastic. This is an initiative developed in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, and it includes an open license to teachers, allowing them to post recordings of themselves reading the stories onto educational platforms and networks, a dedicated hub of information and activities. Um, I think that's that's fantastic. And of course, you can also stream the audiobook of of um, Sorcerer's Stone on Audible right now for free. So that's cool. That's Jim Dale who does all those. So they're they're reading it, but the original reader of this was all Jim Dale. Broadway's Jim Dale. Really? Yes. Have you heard those Jim Dale recordings? I have. You know, we do anything to distract our children right now, people. Do what you can. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and Lynn Manuel Miranda really is nonstop. Sorry, I had to. You got to. You got to. I thought you were going to say you're satisfied. Well, here, listen. <laughs> Lynn Manuel Miranda <laughs> and his family and friends have a new charity campaign. He's always doing good for his communities, his people, theater people, and also immigrant communities in this case. So this is to benefit the Hispanic Federation. And this will raise essential funds for immigrant communities impacted by COVID-19. Now, everyone's impacted, but some communities more than others. So here's the cool thing. You can win all kinds of prizes as you donate. So you can donate as little as $10, and you can win a private Zoom call with Lin-Manuel Miranda. Ooh, look at that. That sounds like something that your mother would want for Mother's Day. I'm going to keep pushing Mother's Day because I'm a mom. Um, Hamilton merch and memorabilia. And here's a really big one two tickets to attend the first reopening performance of Hamilton on Broadway. And that includes $3,000 of an Ex American Express gift card to cover airfare and hotel costs when all that opens up again. So we'll see, but there are a lot of exciting prizes, a dance lesson from Lin-Manuel Miranda's parents, and you know they can cut a rug, or a serenade by Christopher Jackson, 
and he's got a really smooth voice, so you'd want that. So it's all for a great cause. Go check it out, look at the site, and uh, hear Lynn talk about it. Awesome. Uh, hey, Caitlin, thank you so much for your service, Bob. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. We'll see you. We'll see you in a bit. Hey, Caitlin, are you good? Do you know who the guest is? You're good. I'm kidding. I do. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm messing with you. Um, yeah. Why don't you tell everyone about who's here today? Yes, guys. We have Shireen Pimentel here with us. Today's our final guest of the week here on Live at Five Home Edition, live on both Facebook and YouTube. Before this pandemic, Shireen was out there pulling double duty, not only starring as Maria in the West Side Story revival, but also finishing up her final semester at Juilliard. So we're going to talk all about that, what she's been up to. You guys can follow her on Instagram at Shireen Pimentel. Leave all your questions in the comments below. And please welcome Shireen and Paul. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. You do, yeah. I like the I like the denim. I'm into the denim. It's good. It's good Thank luck. you. I got into like painting, so it's actually painted on the back. You um, painted and it's on Harry it? Potter. Yeah, and it's like whole. I I got all into Harry Potter, so it's Hogwarts on the back. Oh my god! How and there's amazing. like a little Deathly Hallow all the way at the end. But yeah, <laughs> is, is this a, is this a recent hobby? Is this like a COVID nineteen hobby? Or yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. because it's so funny. People are really taking. Sorry, someone's calling me. People are really getting creative and doing like you know they're getting into all kinds yeah. of things to keep themselves. Yeah, it's busy. like. I feel like every week I pick up a new hobby. And so for that week it was painting and um, <laughs> I have one jacket that I don't think looks as nice, but I like, that was my first inspiration. And then this one, I was like, I'm going to make something up myself. And I like this one. <laughs> so I'm going to wear it a lot. I don't know. Did you, did you just say you take up a new hobby every week? Yes. Yeah. Tell me, tell me some of the, that is very, I love that. Tell me some of your other hobbies you've taken up. So um, right when like the shutdown happened, I was making jam. So for the first week I did like a lot of jam. Um, and then once I came back to my house, cause I'm in Jersey with my parents, um, I got into back into knitting. Then I got into playing the piano and singing. Then I got wow. into guitar and singing. Then it was painting. Um, then it was, so I'm selling some clothes now, trying to see if I can make my own thrift store. I don't know. Um, and now I'm on TikTok too, yes. which I don't know about all of this. Um, I'm definitely supposed to be a part of Gen Z, but like I self-identify as a millennial. So it's been really interesting. I love that. Were you always that uh, enterprising like as a kid? And like, were you always involved in so many things like that? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, and so now there's nothing to do. Like there's, I, I dyed my hair, I cut my own hair, so these are bangs, and then I just got tired of them. Um, but but yeah, I, I got home and decided that I had to do something. And wow. I though I love singing and love doing all that, I don't always wanna do it. Like I was writing music at one point and then stopped and, and kinda wanted to move into something else. So yeah, I'm trying to see what I can turn into something more long-term, but We'll see. <laughs> like, I have time. So there are a lot Figure of um, kids out there who are, like, finishing up school and sort of going through that in this weird time. And then there's a lot of Broadway performers wondering what's happening with their career and their job. And you're both. You're, yeah. you're, <laughs> you're, you're both those things. So yes. you're actually um, – you're graduating next week. Where are you graduating I from? Am. Um, I'm graduating from Juilliard with a bachelor's of music. That's fancy. Kind of That's yeah. fancy. <laughs> you know, Juilliard, like, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so but, what, what, what has it been like? What has it been like? What's the schooling been like for ever for the last? How did you finish it up? And what, what, how, what, what's been going on? Yeah. Um, so Zoom, like a lot of people, that's kind of been our main way. We meet on Zoom and then um, there's just been like makeshift assignments. No, nothing that we did, especially in your senior year, is um, like can can be done remotely. It's not very academic. It's very um, in-person performance based. Yeah. So it's been very interesting to like wake up every morning and try to figure out what we're doing. Um, but yeah, I'm finishing up all my finals and handing in the last of my assignments and putting together commencement. I have this small surprise in commencement so that's gonna be fun <laughs> what, what do you mean? um i i can't say it, but everyone who's attending our commencement will see what's okay. happening 
Cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so <laughs> you're doing, exciting. are you doing your commencement from exactly where you're sitting? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we're what, gonna be what, doing... what, you, what will you be wearing? I have no idea yet. I have to shop on ASOS. Um, definitely. Oh, online shopping was another hobby I had for a while. <laughs> that was interesting um, because I get a package every single day. Um, it wasn't very good for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have to do some shopping and find like a commencement outfit. And that same day is my mother's birthday. So we've kind of struck a deal that like I can, we're not very far from the city. So I'm going to go into the city and like, take some pictures of me in front of the Juilliard building. But so it's like, it's gotta be half and half for us. Okay. Like half yeah. is her birthday, half my graduation. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. So yeah. let's take, let's take it back a few months. This is, um, this is you, you, are yeah. <laughs> that's you in West Side Story. With, I um, love that, that photo. I love that photo too. I love that moment, the steam yeah. on the mirror. There's steam. <laughs> I love it. It's steaming it up. Uh, that's Isaac Powell, of course, who wow. we all sort of fell for in Once This Island, and now he's your Tony. Um, well, you were a couple months, right, into after opening, when I mean, you had a, a healthy preview period, and then you were finally up. People were, were responding to it and loving it, and it's such a, a new vision for West Side Story. Where, how, how was it? How, how were you sort of, where were you in the process? Were you sort of like settling into it? and? getting used to like, oh, wait, I'm Maria on Broadway. This is cool. Like, this Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's kind of what was happening. Like it was, it was a settling process and I kept thinking, what am I going to do with my day once previews is over and we don't have rehearsal? Right. Um, but it was still full. It was quite full still. Um, and I realized that like, it's a full time. It's, it's, I don't know. I think like as a kid, you think, oh, I'm going to perform at night and I'm going to be a night owl and that's how my life is going to go. And then you realize when you actually do it, that it is a full-time job that also wakes you up in the morning. Um, but that was exciting. Yeah. I was, I was definitely settling in to like just doing it every night. And, and I don't know, I definitely miss it. It's, it's, I get sad. I get sad about it. Yeah. 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 You're fantastic in the show. I can't wait to see it again. Yeah. And the, uh, the camera work, the video work is just, I mean, it blew my mind. I remember there were some moments that I was convinced weren't live. I remember when I when I said hi to you guys backstage afterwards and you were like, oh no, that's all, I'm like, what? Like it blew my mind that some of those things are actually happening live. So it's a crazy yeah. production. I hope everyone gets to see it soon. At so the do I. Theater. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and, and it seems like a really fantastic cast too. A lot yeah. of newcomers. Um, what, what, what was it like sort of getting to, and I'm sure it's a very bonding experience when you're in something that so many eyes are on and everyone's kind of wondering what's happening and you guys are all sort of like in secret rehearsals and you know, <laughs> a lot of things. We didn't know a lot of the things about the production until we got to see it. Um, yeah. I'm sure that sort of elevates the relationships a little bit. Absolutely, I think, I think it helped us kind of get closer because as a cat, it, it's like camaraderie. It's like um, people think, oh, you have friends who like do the same job. And it's like, yes, because they go through it with me. And and that was even more prevalent with like all of us were are in the show and, and we're doing the same hours and also doing the same show and going through the changes of what we were doing. Um, so yeah, I think we're really tight knit. Every time I get on like a call or like in a group chat, like everyone misses each other and I miss everyone so, so much. And and you can really feel the love, I think, in the cast. Um, it's really palpable, yeah. Speaking of, can you feel the love tonight? You actually made your, that was, that was good, thank you. Uh, I love that. You, you actually, you did it right when I wanted you to do it. Uh, you made your Broadway debut at what age? At nine years old. Wow, as young Nala. Yeah, yeah uh, as there, young there, Nala. There have been a lot of uh, girls who played young Nala in in the years since The Lion King started. How, and then, how long were you in the show? Uh, about six months, and then I left and I came back for a few weeks. Okay. Yeah. Now, here's what I always wonder: your 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 parents, I'm sure, were very supportive and excited that you were. And and for a kid to do a Broadway show, the parents are extremely involved. Obviously, I mean, you have they have to be. You have to, you know bring you to the theater. And there's a, there's a lot of, it's, it's, it's a, it's a big job for the parents too. Yeah. Were, were your parents um, terrified that, did you immediately want to do Broadway again? And I wonder if your parents, I mean, maybe they, maybe they can answer better than you, but were they nervous that like an opportunity wouldn't happen again? You know what I mean? Like a lot of kids who start that young don't necessarily turn into adult actors. So 
Was that a discussion? Yeah. Were they ever trying to sort of like temper your expectations about it? And um, they they never wanted to like kind of steer me away. They were very supportive of like me continuing doing theater um, because my whole life I wanted to be a performer. Like before even The Lion King, I wanted to be a performer. So they knew that that was a path I was taking. Mm -hmm. um, but my parents were absolutely terrified before I did before I. I did Broadway because mm -hmm. I went and saw the show and I was like, I want to be in the show. And that was it. And my parents, there's no one who's in music in any art form. Um, and they said, well, if you can figure it out, like we will support you in any way that we need, like take you there. We'll do things like that. Um, and I figured it out. And so I think that's kind of been the, the process of um, theater in my life and the arts was like, if I wanted to do it, I just had to find out where, um, mm -hmm. and, and, and be persistent in that way. And then they were there to like supplement the process of like the financial and also like, how does it fit into my schedule and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but no, I do remember when I was uh, maybe a freshman in college, my mom saying, you know, sometimes I do get really scared, um, that maybe, maybe you won't have a job. Like maybe yeah. you won't know what's happening. Um, and I said, I do too. And I, that's what I told her was like, I genuinely am afraid as well. But like, I will, I was willing back then and I am now to like still do it, even if it's not like Broadway, though I, that's what I do now. I'm on Broadway. Um, yeah. But like, after that's over, like, even if I'm not in a Broadway show, like I'm still willing and, and want to do theater and want to perform. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they do get scared. They definitely do about like, what am I doing next? And when am I doing it? So, have, yeah. you met, have you met uh, Audrey McDonald yet? No, no. Still waiting. Audrey. It's going to okay. happen. Okay. I know it's going to happen. Okay. I, don't have her, um... I, I don't have her like, I can't <laughs> pop her in, unfortunately. But uh... um, We're both doing the Covenant House Gala um, that's virtual. Oh. So like, yeah. there will be like virtual <laughs> meeting there. <laughs> Hopefully one day. Yeah, yeah, you're a big fan. You're a big fan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are there any Audrey McDonald roles you would love to do? Sarah in Ragtime. That's like top of the list. Of course. Um, yeah. yeah, I would say, and and maybe Lady Day. Like I'm just I'm, or just to like study what she did for that because I just found it so fascinating and wow. so amazing. I because I. Um, my mom got these really great seats that even though we weren't like down on the stage, um, it was just straight ahead and it was basically like watching a concert and it was just amazing. Yeah. Like absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. Cause you could sit on the floor and she would sort of walk around and I was glad I didn't, I, that would have been, that would have been too close for me. That was, I mean, she like had to, I, and I, I, don't, always, I don't know how you don't get thrown. Like, I don't know how she doesn't get thrown by, people making faces or not paying attention or, but she was fantastic in that. For me, I would have like been there and been like, oh, oh my God. And was like <laughs> sobbing the whole way. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I love that. Do you see any actors that you like met as a kid? Like when, you know, you, you were, were you like auditioning a lot in addition to The Lion King or was it just sort of like, you're like, no, I'm young Nala. That's what I need to do. That's my yeah. role. Yeah. That that was my thing. Was and then as it was ending, I was like, wait, I want to be on Broadway still. And I was right. like, how do I? And then I didn't. And I was like, I'm gonna go study for a while. Um, but no, for opening night, um, somebody who was in the Lion King with me when I was really young was at like opening night and the party and everything. And I did not cry that night. Like I was no, I did. That's a lie. Just then they gave me a hug and I started sobbing. Like I wasn't oh. crying. And then she was like, ah, just broke down. But then the rest of the night I was so excited and just kind of like up on adrenaline and it was such a crazy night. But um, as it was ending, he just talked to me about like watching the journey and then seeing me perform now, which 10 years later. And that was the one thing that made me cry was like having somebody who's kind of seen that progression of me as like a very angsty teenager and also a child who had no idea what she was doing all the way till now and like graduating college and doing something like this um yeah it, it just like brought up so many emotions um i love to see like people that i knew when i was younger and then till now to yeah. like see that yeah to see what what we're up to now and and yeah what what performing has brought us to 
Yeah. And what was the Juilliard experience like for you? What What's your class number? Uh, there's, I'm one of eight. So you're, yeah, oh, you're one of eight people. in your year? Eight yeah. In our, Interesting. In our graduate what, year. So what kind of music are you studying? There? Like what kind of stuff do you, you don't just do Broadway. I don't do any Broadway there. Um, it's all, you're doing all, you're doing all classical. All classical music. So when I am sitting here doing my assignments, currently I'm trying to finish up a final that's all about Clara Schumann's music. So it's all classical music. Um, wow. Yeah, it's, there's a lot going on um, with that. But yeah, I, what was that experience? Uh, I wanted to be in New York City and I went to Juilliard when I was in pre-college in high school for three years. And I felt like that building was like where I needed to be. There was something that I hadn't finished and it didn't have to do with the degree and it didn't have to do with any of that. It just had to do with like the building and the people that were there. Um, and I think I learned so much more outside of the classroom and just experiencing like the environment than anything else. Um, just cause you're, it's a building full of like drama and dance and music yeah. and all genres. Um, but it's actually very common that you won't see anybody outside of your division for the entire time you go there. And so you have to like push yourself outside of your comfort zone and push yourself to go and attend other things um, and just be a part of anything you possibly can. And I think that that really helped the mindset of like, it's a great school and it and it has a lot to offer, but unless you were willing to like grab the experience in any possible way you could, like you, you still wouldn't get everything you could out of it. And- right. Yeah, I think that that taught me a lot. Go it, like moving into like auditioning and and trying to right. break back into like Broadway and theater was that like you really have to advocate for yourself and like do so much for yourself so that you um, can get to where you want to. Yeah, I, I this is one thing that I can say I am very proud of. I am the only vocal arts student who has been in a drama production, like on stage in the drama production. Um, I was in Into the Woods my junior year. And uh, that I'm, I'm looking more yeah. merch, merch. I knew. I knew. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like absolutely obsessed with Into the Woods, but I went to the first week we started school, I went into um the head of our department and said, I don't care. Like I will play number three tree in the back and like I will sway around. Like I just want to be in the room while the rehearsals happen and I just want to be a part of the experience. Um and I played Rapunzel and Cinderella's mother, which was really exciting. Um but like that, that took a, people always ask me like, how do you do theater and go to Juilliard? It's like, you just have to like advocate. You have to talk. Like, wow. I want this. I want to do this thing. Um, and they'll try That's to make good. it happen. Yeah. yeah I'm, sure, I'm sure it also helped your decision to go to Juilliard that Audra McDonald went there. Hey, uh, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> it doesn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring Caitlin back in and find yeah. out what the fans are asking. Awesome. Yeah, all right, so first question. Were you more nervous to audition for Juilliard or for West Side Story? Oh. West Side Story, West Side Story hands down. What, what was that audition like? And what, um, and what did you know about what they were looking for? I mean, from the very get-go, they were looking for very different, you know, types of people for this, for these roles. Yeah, so West Side Story, I actually had no idea what they wanted when I first walked into the room. Um, I was leaving to go to JFK and fly out to London that same day, like within maybe three hours of my audition. Um, and I coached myself through the whole thing because I just truly didn't know and nobody knew. Everyone knew that there was this like elusive West Side Story revival right, that was happening right. with no information. And everybody was like, right. what happens? Um, and I truly did think like, I don't think that I'll get this, but like, I wanna do the best I can because why not? Um, and I walked in and that's when I, I talked to Alex Gimignani. He was the first person I auditioned for. And the notes that he gave me, I was like, this is different. I love it. But this is like, take everything that I even know about West Side Story, throw it out the window and like make something else that I want to make up. Um, which is also terrifying. <laughs> yeah. But like was also so exciting because I got to just mess with it. Um, yeah, I didn't know a lot though when I first walked in. So I definitely walked uh -huh. in white dress, full on, like not the Maria that I have now. Um, yeah. <laughs> to do the audition. Yeah. Yeah, not, not this girl. 
Not, not her. her. No, not her. You he did not, not have her. curly hair <laughs> in jeans and t-shirt. Like, <laughs> love it. All right. So a lot of people want to know, including Stephanie on YouTube, what's it like working with Steven Sondheim, girl? <laughs> <laughs> What's it like? It's fun. He's hilarious. Just putting it out there. He's so funny. Um, it, it, after our first preview, somebody had told him that I was still in school and he was like, what else do you have to learn? And I was like, whoa, I love this. Okay. Um, what else do I have to learn? I don't know. Like, I'm studying your music in school, but it's okay. Um, but yeah, it, he, he's so a part of the process, which is exciting to have somebody who like wrote it be a part of it. And so like we were uh, talking about orchestrations and stuff and he was like on a, on FaceTime with us and like there, he's like a, just such a important part, I think of it. And, and we're always starstruck. Like who isn't starstruck when they see Sondheim? So like, yeah. You know, I'm playing Maria and still I'm like, hi, like, hello, how are you? Like, ah, <laughs> this is crazy. Um, and it and I had worked on Roadshow in the summer. Yeah. So it wasn't the first time seeing him in a rehearsal room. And still I was freaking out every time he walked in. Uh -huh. Um, yeah, so it's exciting working with Isaac. I get this question a lot, actually. He's great. <laughs> so many people ask me, like, is he as nice as he seems, yes, he's awesome. I love working with him. Speaking of Sondheim, thank you for taking part in our I'm Still Here number. On, uh, yes. it's, fun, it's fun to see someone your age saying, I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> she is, she's still here. We're stealing it. I love it. We're going to stick with this theme of people wanting to know what it's like to work with the people you have worked with. <laughs> and Joe wants to know, can you tell me about John Mulaney's Sack Lunch Bunch? Oh, right. Tell me about that. Right. Yes. So that was probably the craziest experience, like, work-wise that I've ever had. Um, that got set up in, like, a day. Within 24 hours, somebody told me that I was doing this and sent me a track and sheet music and told me that a car was picking me up at four in the morning wow. to take me to Brooklyn. Um, I was in the middle of orientation. Like I was an orientation leader. <laughs> so I just had to tell them, hey guys, like I, I can't come for a few hours. Like I will be back. Um, and I showed up at four or five in the morning and they were like, hey, could you sing the song right now? And I was like, could I just warm up for just like a sec, just a quick second? Cause there's like a high B flat in there. Um, yeah. Um, and I remember getting a call right before and they asked me, do you have any flowy dresses? Like, how long is your hair? Like, we're going for this Stevie Nicks idea. And I was like, this is awesome. I have none of those things, but cool. And they were like, what's your size? We're just going to try to find stuff. So I show up and do this whole like fitting. And they're like, oh, the dress fits. It's perfect. They throw me in this wig of long hair. And I'm sitting there like, what am I doing? Like, what in the world is happening? I'm not ready. Like, before West Side Story, like, none of this had happened to me in years. So I had no idea what I was doing. And then I show up on set and, like, John Mulaney's there. And he's like, oh, my God. Like, you're so great. Like, I love. And I was like, hi? Like, you know who I am? Hello. <laughs> this is phenomenal. And then um, we play, we played Heads Up on set the whole time cool. cool. and then they put me on this like spinning disc and they put this huge fan in front of my face and they were like just think like abba and just like look off into the distance like you never know what they're looking at but you always wonder and i was right, like right, right. yeah <laughs> got it <laughs> and then you know from 4 a.m to like 10 a.m and it was done and i was eating lunch and i was like i kind of want to live a life like this forever <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it was exciting. It was You're definitely like, I'm exciting. Good. I'm exactly. Good with this I was life. like, I can keep doing this. Yeah. Um, but to see the finished product, I don't know. That is what I now find so fascinating about film is to have seen what we were using and how it was being created and then seeing the final product. It's just, it's amazing. I, yeah. I, it, I just found it so fascinating. And so, I also got kind of obsessed with Marvel movies during this whole thing. And the whole way I've been like, mom, how do you think they do that? Like, how do you think they make that thing? Right, um, right, right, right. Yeah, that kind of tied in the whole, yeah, experience with 
Zach Lunch Bunch and John Mulaney. <laughs> I love it. I love that you have so many like little uh, important credits now to your name already. It's so good. <laughs> young young Nala is most important, but but the other ones are good too, of course. Let's bring back the crew. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for joining yeah. us. We we hope you have a great graduation, Thank and you. I hope we see the I hope we see some photos on social media. You will. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Uh, and uh, and hopefully we'll see you back at the Broadway Theater soon in your t shirt yeah. and jeans, breaking our hearts as Maria because of your voice is stunning. It's so good. It's so good. Uh, thank you so much again. Have a great weekend, mm -hmm. all of you guys. And Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in for a Live at Five Home Edition. You guys can follow along where we get your podcast by searching for hashtag Live at Five and hitting that subscribe button. Have a great weekend. Stay inside. Stay six feet away from each other. Wear a mask at all times outside. And be sure to tune in next time. We talk to Michael R. Jackson, the freshly Pulitzer Prize winning playwright of The Strange Loop. <laughs>